All right, friends, what's up? Weekly weigh-in episode three. This is uh, the week uh, the week we ended Rise 45, which I will definitely be talking about and where I'm going to next, uh, as well as a few other other training adjustments, changes to my training to kind of keep up, uh, keep in step with uh, some things that are coming coming down the road, which I think I've kind of alluded to, but I'll definitely dive into more. But before we get into all that, I've got to give a special thank you to my brand partners as usual. So FNX Fit, makers of, among other things, Recharge Plus, which is my new favorite pre-workout. And I'm actually gonna do a full review of this stuff at some point because I'm really impressed by it. I mean, I'm not a stim pre-workout guy or haven't been for a long time. So to find one that actually works really well and doesn't screw with me is is a is a pretty uh, pretty pretty monumental as far as I'm concerned. I'd, I'd like to talk about it. And uh, you know, I think I mentioned this last uh, on the last episode, but uh, as a company, you know, like I really like what they're doing. So feel free to check that out if you're in the market for a new pre-workout. And of course, I've got a I've got a discount code for you. It's uh, linked in my bio, and I'll throw it up on screen. And of course, my uh, my other partners, uh, Cascadia Hemp Co., where I get. I think I show you this, this uh, Cannabis Basics um, topical, and I'm really loving this stuff. Uh, I, again, I don't want to go too far into it, but uh, I, I think I mentioned this a little bit, but I got a, took a little bit of a, of a bad neck spike, and I'll actually have footage of that, and I, I know you sadists want to see me uh, get my ass uh, handed to me by, by coach. As an aside, that, that's always, I, I was thinking about that. That's a really weird statement, like when, when you get, I don't know, when, when, when something bad and violent happens like having your ass handed because because somebody says like having your ass handed to you that sounds that sounds kind of cordial that sounds like kind of friendly like yeah here you go but especially if you've done if you know any of you guys out there who are combat sports practitioners you know if you've gone against somebody who's better than you and they're just like they're just wrecking you it doesn't feel cordial or friendly or like somebody's just like giving you a present at all does it? it it feels more like uh I don't know. It's more like uh, for you Chappelle show fans. It's more like that that one Rick, uh, Rick James sketch where he's where he's, where he's uh, on on dude's couch and he's just kicking the couch. He's just like fuck your couch. That's kind of what it feels like. So I I, I don't know. Maybe we, I, I I move that we like change that we replace uh, that we replace having your ass handed to you to like I, I'm not sure what the best way to put that because that just having your couch fucked sounds weird. So maybe that's not. Maybe that's not the way to go. Anyway, back to back to what I was saying. But I've I've actually been using this stuff quite a bit. Um, yeah, in fact, I'm wearing some of it right now because, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, when you take, you know, when you take uh, some kind of damage to, to tissues like that, you know, you want to keep it moving. But when it's stiff and it hurts, sometimes it's hard to do that. Right. So, you know, using using the uh, the cannabis basics uh, topicals kind of let me sort of dull that a bit so I can actually get my movement in, you know, move my neck around. And I, I think it's actually helped a lot. Um, so if you want to try that out, same thing. I have a code for you. It's linked in my bio and I'll throw it up on screen here. And... I think that's it. Uh, so yeah, so let's let's go ahead and dive in. So weekly win episode three. Uh, let's start with well, let's start with the end of Rise Forty Five. Um, I talked a little bit about kind of you know Rise Forty Five, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it last week. So I think what we'll talk about now is where I'm going to go next. I think I mentioned this, but just to reiterate, you know, I like the fact that you know two forty fives is ninety, which is a quarter. I like to line my training up on quarters, so you know, so I'll do something one quarter, and then I'll, I'll that, because that gives me like four good, you know, four good mesos a year, and you know, I only train certain things, so it's so I mean, I train you know strength, hypertrophy, power, and now I'm gonna add GPP, so that's perfect, so that's four blocks a year, and uh, I really like that. So <clears throat> so I'm gonna so for the next 45 days, I'll be doing the uh, the body weight stuff. Uh, so they, they gave us two workouts, they, uh, uh, two programs. They gave us a gym program and a, and a body weight program for people who are stuck at home. So I'm going to go ahead and do the body weight one just because um, I, I sort of ended up doing a lot of body weight during the first one just because I was training in my apartment. And I liked... I liked what I saw from it. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, you know, they're just that body weight movement competency is great for grappling. So uh, I definitely, I definitely saw the benefit of that. And so I want to just do go full on, go all in with the body weight, especially because coming up to tournaments, I don't, um, I, I don't want to do too much heavy, like weight stuff. Not, not because of, you know, I don't want to get big and bulky. And so it's, I just, I just don't want to like, I, I want to be able to recover. And the problem with like, the problem with, like if, if I do like super, strength and power stuff like a lot of that stuff it's like I, I tend to go a little crazy with it because I love training like that and I know that if I do I'm going to you know I'm I'm gonna bork my recovery because I'm not gonna be eating enough I'm not gonna be sleeping well and I'm still gonna be trying to train a lot of jujitsu but I want to get to you know like I said I want to put jujitsu front and center and train kind of to support that and I think the body weight stuff 
is going to gate that naturally for me because I'm not, I'm not super body weight competent. So, you know, it, it's not, it's going to be very easy for me to say, okay, I'm done. Yeah. I did my body weight workout. Cool. You know, not go crazy with it because I mean, let's, I'll, I'll be honest. Like it, it, it doesn't give me the same jollies right now that barbell training or, you know, weight training does just because I'm not that I'm not as good at it. So that might, that'll probably change. I mean, at some point, cause it's not that I don't like body weight training. I'm just not good at it. So <clears throat> as I, I'm sure as I improve, who knows, I might get to the point where I'm doing stupid things or overtraining. I'm going to try not to though. Like I said, I'm going to try and uh, keep my head in the game and, you know, put, put jujitsu first and not go crazy. Um, I'm going to balance it a little bit by doing so. Like I said, I, th I think I mentioned this also last week, but I'm going to do some hypertrophy training. So a little bit of a hypertrophy block just tacked onto the end of my, um, my body weight stuff and not much, like just a couple sets, um, of almost accessory type work just to kind of complement whatever I did on the day with the main workout, just because, uh, I mean, I'll say it, I've, I've lost some size and I like, I like, I like, I like being big. I like having big arms. I like having big shoulders. I like, I like having, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little bit vain and I miss, I miss like being jacked. So I want to get back to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be interesting. So it's going to be, you know, rise 45 body weight, five days a week of jujitsu. Um, I'm going to try and get good rolls in twice a week. Uh, so that'll be, you know, three or four, three or four sparring, sparring rounds a day. And, and I'm going to split it. Like I said, I, I like to treat rolls like intervals. So, you know, a couple times a week with breaks with, you know, probably two days in between. So I'm looking at like a Monday, Monday and Thursday or Tuesday and Friday, something like that. And yeah. And, uh, more mobility work. I'm doing a lot of targeted mobility work. So hips, like I said, I want to, want to get, get, get that butterfly, um, stretch good. So, uh, so I can get my rubber guard. Cause, uh, you know, the thing with rubber guard is it, it's not, I mean, yes, it's a ton of planet thing. So I'd like to be able to do it, but I think as a big guy, it's kind of a cool tool to have because especially like in an absolute or something, right? I mean, I have really short legs, so I don't think I'm going to be, I don't, I don't know how effective it would be against somebody my size. Um, just, just kind of depends. I mean, there's things I might be able to do, but I'm not going to know until I get there. But I think if I'm in an absolute and I'm like, you know, I'm going against somebody who's, you know, who I've got 50, 60 pounds on, you know, then, then I think it'll be kind of a cool thing to be able to pull out and maybe surprise people. So, uh, that, and there's just, there's just a lot of options from it. I mean, and you know, I, I really like some of the, some of the paths that we've already been training and, you know, I've been watching, uh, mastering the system, which is, you know, Eddie Bravo's kind of online video thing. And he's got a lot of cool paths too. So yeah, I think just be, a, it'd be a fun thing to do. And I mean, also let's be honest. I mean, I sit here and talk about being a, a mobility guy. So I guess it's just one of those things that I, I should, I should have as, as a credential, you know, just to, just to, just to prove that like, Hey, my own, my own secret sauce works. Right. So yeah. So that's, that's that. I guess we're kind of getting into general training now. So let's just segue into, into the general training part. Um, and I realized that I've just kind of talked about all of it. So I don't have much more to say there other than, other than I started back, back to the gym today. And I'll actually talk a little bit about some returning to the gym strategies that's on, on the, uh, the docket for today. So that said, let's see what else uh, is on the docket for today. Ah, yes. Yeah, so um, I think this is a redux topic, but because I'm going into another round of Rise 45, I thought it was worth revisiting because I, I know... Um, I know some people have different opinions on fitness challenges and I, you know, I've actually talked to people who, you know, I've gotten, I got DMS from folks who were like, yeah, I really want to do something like that. You know, I want to do the on at six challenge or the rise 45 challenge or any of these. There's so many out there, but I, I don't know. Should I do it? I think, you know, I don't want to, you know, is, is it going to, is, I don't, I don't want to do, I don't want to commit to something that I don't know if it's going to actually be useful or if it's going to make a good change or if it's going to be, you know, just because there's, I guess in certain social media circles, there's kind of this air of like, oh, fitness challenges are bad and they don't create lasting changes. And, you know, it's, it's just, it's just marketing. And, and I, to reiterate kind of what I said last time, I really think it, it kind of comes down to the specifics of the fitness challenge. Um, yes. If it's, if, if it's like something like the FNX, like, like FNX rise 45, or actually we're doing another one uh, later called summer shred, um, or on at six. Yeah. There's, Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a buy-in, but I think if it's run properly, you get a lot of good value. I mean, like, so for example, I mean, you know, the On at Six Challenge, like they do, they have, you know, they get 
they get programming from on it from the on it coaches and they get you know they they have uh, you know obviously a facebook group you know, which is kind of a given these days but you know the coaches jump onto that and do you know do facebook lives with people so you're actually so you know so you actually feel like you're kind of connected to this community and it was the same with rise 45 you know i mean we had um you know we had we had a facebook group and uh we had you know chats with with uh, with, with kind of the, the fnx founders and stuff like that and they were all very engaged and you know that's that's kind of cool i mean just i think the the community aspect is something that i think a lot of people talk about in fitness but at the same time it's one of those things that sometimes it feels a little lip servicey like people just kind of bring it up because you're supposed to talk about community and fitness but but then they it's almost like it's not a they don't see it as as big uh, of as big a value prop as it actually is. You know, like for me, for example, that's one of the big reasons I wanted to do Rise Forty Five was for the community aspect. You know, just because um, all the time that I've been a an, an, you know in in the ambassador program, I've really enjoyed interacting with the people um, in the group and and of course the folks at, at FNX and. And I'm, I'm trying. I'm not trying to turn this into an FNX commercial. It's just this is just like the perspective I have right now. So, so don't at me about that. Um, but uh, so what was I saying? Something about interacting with people. Uh, let's see. I had something for this community. Oh, dead air. Um, so no, but um, so yeah. So so part of so, so like I said, part of the reason I did it was to be uh, was was just because I wanted to be part of the community, um, and. I don't know. It's, it's kind of neat. It's kind of actually, it's kind of nice to like have a positive reason to go onto Facebook. You know, I mean, some, some of you guys know, I actually have blocked my, my Facebook feed with this great, great Chrome extension called uh, called Facebook called newsfeed eradicator. So it's kind of nice to like go to Facebook and just see like a bunch of positivity and just see a bunch of people who are like supporting each other and, you know, and, and being cool and not, not positing about sociopolitics or virology or things that they don't really know about. But uh, anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. So um, <clears throat> so I, I guess to, to kind of make this useful, um, so I mentioned, you know, let, let's talk about, you know, if you're going to go into a fitness challenge, like things to look at. So I, I will say that I think there are some challenges that are like, either very extreme or very short term, you know, if it, if, cause like, <clears throat> like, a, like a seven day challenge, I, I don't know how useful that is. Right. Or something that's like lose, you know, a whole lot of weight in a very short time. I mean, depending on, on what it is and how it's structured, that could go either way. So I would say, look at something that's more based around the idea of, you know, not, not, I mean, I, mean, I think, you know, a KPI like lose X pounds. I think, like I said, that's just, that, that's a very slippery slope. I, I would actually like, I, I would take that off the table completely. I, I would look at um, things like, uh, if, you know, if the goal is things like, you know, building habits, building workout habits, um, you know, getting you to follow a program, getting you to follow, getting, 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 getting to, getting you to, um, that's a good way to put it getting you to, to build certain tenets of a good fitness lifestyle. So, you know, things like watching your nutrition, things like, uh, like, you know, having a mindfulness practice, having a, you know, having a gratitude practice. And this, and this is something that I see like uh, in common with a lot of the challenges, like, you know, like, you know, rise 45 or, or the on at six that I would really recommend because, because then it's like, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at kind of this, like I said, how do we make this a lifestyle? How do we make lifestyle changes versus, you know, how do we just, you know, instead of just, just making drastic changes that are unsustainable just to get to the end of the challenge, right? I mean, for me, coming out of Rise 45, one of my big KPIs was, can I, you know, can, can I figure out how to make this content creation thing sustainable? And I feel like I have, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I've, you know, granted, this is only the third episode of this, but, you know, I did a bunch of, I mean, I, I did a bunch of episodes while I was in Rise 45. And I, you know, I kind of took what I learned from not being able to, to meet that, um, that content schedule and sort of transit it to what I'm doing now, where, you know, I do this one episode uh, every week. And then I do kind of the clips from the episode, like, which, you know, which is something that I, I think a lot of people do. So, uh, you know, I mean, it, seems like it's a pattern that works. So why not? You know, why not? Why not just, you know, what do they say? Success leaves clues, right? I mean, so. So I think, um, sorry, 
uh, I'm a little spacey. Like it's, it's first first day back at the gym. Uh, I didn't go super hard, but you know, it's it's, it's definitely a different stimulus. So, um, um, so yeah. So so sorry. This idea of you know how do you how do you take how, how does is is the challenge aimed at helping you build a lifestyle? You know, is it going to like is is it going to give you steps to you know to continue? I mean, because because that's the thing. If the challenge is over when it's over, then you didn't really get anything out of it. And I think if the people who are setting the challenge up are are really mindful of trying to create something something like useful that's actually useful then i think that'll be a consideration you know the consideration will be like you know what do you do afterwards and and it's funny because i'm looking at some of the kind of the comments from people on the rise 45 group after um you know after after the challenge i mean there you see a lot of stories from people who are like yeah you know i i did this thing over the challenge and now it's just part of my day you know uh, I mean, hydration is a great example. You know, one of the things that they had us do was was it was track hydration. And now there are people now that are like, yeah, I just I keep a you know I, I have a water bottle with me all the time now. And and you know, and and for some of you guys who are like fitness pros, you know, like you're like, well, duh, like okay, of course you do that. But but you gotta understand, like you know, everybody starts from different places. You know, not everybody. You know, you know, I mean, to some people it's not. You know, some people didn't do that up till now. I mean, same with like nutrition, you know, for some people who are like died in the whole fitness, I was like, well, yeah, of course I track my, 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 my macros. Of course. I, but a, a lot of people don't, I mean, you know, sometimes we get so, um, I, I mean, I don't, for lack of a better term, you know, we, we get so kind of in, in, you know, in that little echo chamber or, you know, we, we just assume that, you know, everything is, is kind of at the level we are and it's really not. So so I think that's, you know, and, and again, and, you know, just to kind of go back to kind of the point of this, I, I think that's kind of, again, another value of this is, that, you know, it, it can really help people level up to, you know, because because I think there are a lot of people now, especially in this kind of post, you, you know, I mean, you, you know, you know what's, what's been going on. I, I think there are a lot of people who are very cognizant of of how important fitness is and how important health and wellness are, and they really, really want to make that change, but you know, it's not always as easy as just going to the gym and meeting with a trainer. It's not always as easy as, as, you know, just, just Googling, how do I get in shape? I mean, that's fact, that's probably the worst thing to do. <laughs> so, um, so, so being able to, um, have, have that guidance and especially like I said, if it's something that's set up to help you move into a sustainable like lifestyle practice, I think is the hallmark of a good challenge. And that's, that's really something, you know, you, you're going to have to look at if you're considering doing one. Um, I, again, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to come off as a shill, but I, I, I was really impressed with how they ran Rise 45. And I, I would recommend if, if you're looking for, you know, a, a good challenge, you know, join, join us for summer shred. I'm definitely going to be doing that challenge. Um, of course it'll be modified a little bit to sort of, you know, not, uh, not compete with jujitsu. So, I mean, I'll do similar to what I did with rise 45. I'll, I'll try and fit it in while still kind of keeping to the spirit of, but you know, if you're at a place where, you know, you want to just kind of work out, you want to just sort of just get onto something. Yeah. Jump in, you know, I mean, feel free to hit me up with questions. Um, I'm happy to, you know, I'm happy to tell you what I know or keep you, uh, keep you posted. I mean, I'll definitely be talking about it more as it approaches. So yeah. So that's, um, that's my thought on, on challenges and corollary to that. I actually wanted to talk a little bit, and I think this is another Redux topic, but I want to talk about another thing that I think keeps maybe not keeps people from doing challenges but something that people have heard you know through the through whatever fitness grapevines there they you know they have their ears to ears or eyes i guess um to and that's that it you know that oh challenges are just program hopping and you know you should just you know you should you just pick one thing and stay with it and again i think that goes back to how the challenge is structured. So program hopping is, is interesting. I mean, I want, let's, let's just talk about that. I mean, I think, I think this is going to be a super unpopular way to look at this. And it's, it is, there is going to be a lot of qualification, but, um, I think there's a lot of ado made about program hopping that may, may be unwarranted because I, th I think nowadays, a lot of people 
have gotten really good at writing programs. There are, I mean, and not that, not that writing good programs is super hard. I mean, it definitely is a skill in and of itself. I mean, hey, I just paid two thousand bucks to take a, a an eight week course on on how to write programs. Um, but um, I think as more people kind of get savvy to the tenets of smart training, you know, things like sticking to basic patterns and proper progression and regression and, you know, things like, I don't know, things like metabolic stress or things like, you know, rep ranges for specific uh, goals and outcomes. I think what you're finding, and this is coming from somebody who's done a lot of programs and looked at a lot of programs and written a lot of programs, is that the gap between a lot of programs is not that big anymore. Um, I, I almost think that if you, if you have a good idea about what your goal is, I think you can find programs within that bucket that are all going to largely be complementary at, at the very least complementary, but they may even be, I, I don't want to say they're going to be the same program, but I, I think, I, I think the Delta between them is going to be so insignificant that you're not really program hopping. You know, what you're doing is you're just, you're just changing some order. You might be changing some specific exercises, but you're still training, the same paradigms and you're still working the same principles and on some level you're still working the same methodology so i would actually say if you're at a point you know say you've been on a program for six months and you know maybe you're still making changes but you're a little bored i i think there's nothing wrong with with maybe just making a, you know, just taking a step to the side and, and looking, looking for something else that might be, you know, for example, say you're doing, I'm going to get a little specific here and I, and I apologize if like, if, if, if you lose the frame of reference on this, but uh, say you're doing uh, something like Dr. John Russin's um, functional power training, which is kind of a strength and power, you know, conjugate based, based program. And you decide to jump to something like 531, which is another kind of pure strength program you're going to be changing some things. Like obviously you won't be doing as much say banded work unless you write that into your five, three, one, you won't be doing, you know, dynamic effort, but you know, you won't be doing max effort, but you'll still be doing a lot of similar movements. You'll still be doing a lot of strength based training. And I think the, I, I don't think you're going to be throwing your system for as big a loop as people make it out to be. And, and, and again, like I said, there's, there's a lot of qualification in what I just said, and I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole unless somebody really wants me to. And if you hit me up and I'm happy to talk you through kind of what I'm, my thought process there. But I, I think, I, I think it can be done in such a way where you're still going to continue to make progress. You're still going to be meeting the goals that you're interested in. And you're actually, I don't, I don't think you're actually going to take any steps back. So that to I guess to circle back to what how that kind of lines up how that's corollary to to fitness challenges you know I mean depending on how the workouts for said fitness challenge are structured it might be like I said you might be just making that little jump to something that's that's similar to what you're already doing or in my case you might be jumping to something that is complementary to your to your long-term goal, right? So uh, I think I mentioned this, but you know, one of the things that I was really excited about with Rise 45 was that it was a GPP program, you know, general physical preparedness. And that's something I hadn't done almost ever. I haven't done GPP in a long time, which is a weird thing to say, right? Um, for, 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 you know, a martial artist. For, uh, but it, uh, it was definitely a big departure from what I was doing. But so this is kind of the other side of the spectrum. So it was a big departure from what I was doing, but at the same time, there were a lot of movements and a lot of paradigms that were similar. Because I'd come off of doing uh, FPT, um, you know, functional power training, which again, so I was doing, you know, a lot of speed work, a lot of banded work. I was doing, you know, cleans. I was doing, uh, you know, banded box squats for speed and for time. And then to move to something where, you know, I'm doing snatches and I'm doing, you know, push presses. So similar movements, similar ideas, very similar programming, but there were just enough kind of changes to things like the set rep scheme or the time scheme where 
it was a slightly different where, where the outcome was different. And, but to me, like it didn't feel super different to my nervous system, my CNS, for example. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm still sort of doing the similar, so the same thing, but different enough that is eliciting different changes. So I guess to wrap this up, cause uh, I, I'm starting to kind of, I guess I'm kind of starting to go, go down a rabbit hole here. Um, don't not do a challenge. Boy, that was great English. My, my, my mom is, is hopefully not going to listen to this and shoot me because she's a teacher. Um, but don't avoid doing something like that, especially when the opportunity comes just because you're worried that, <clears throat> oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm programming, hop I'm programming hopping and now I'm the worst person in the world. No. Okay. <laughs> Take a look at how the challenge is structured, take a look at however this thing you want to do is structured and see if it lines up with, if it in any way lines up with what you're trying to do. And, you know, there's ways you can, you, and there might even be ways to, to do it, you know, to go back to Rise 45. This is one of the things that they told us initially was like, yeah, the, the program is is completely tweakable. And, you know, if you post in the, and again, the value of having a group in a community, you know, the coaches actually said, hey, if you post in the group and you have questions about how you how you might be able to change or how you can modify the programming to fit your goals closer, we're happy to do that. And again, that's another thing that hopefully like there, that you just provide with your challenge. So that's so so i think that's a way to approach that without kind of worrying about the uh the, the program hopping boogeyman there um you know obviously if you know you you know say you just started a uh let's just say you just started a pure strength program 2 weeks ago and then you're jumping to a hypertrophy program well it's like well okay that that's a bit of a stretch but Again, there's there's ways to make it not as bit of a stretch. And this is a giant, giant conversation, guys. I mean, now we're starting, like I said, we're starting to really get into the weeds of how to program. And uh, again, if this is something you guys want to hear me talk about, send me a DM. I mean, I, I will do a whole episode on programming because um, it's... You know, it's something that I'm, that I'm, I mean, really, really passionate about. I mean, I... I mean, I, this is going to sound super dorky, but I write programs just for fun, just for myself. Like, and I, like I have, like, if you look at my Google sheets, I have tons of programs I've written that I have never actually done. I just kind of wrote them because I had an idea and I wanted to see what it looked like on paper. And like I said, you know, I'm taking this course on programming, uh, on how to write programs. I'm actually going to take another one. Um, uh, the bot, like, I guess it's just BP train now, but it used to be box programming. Uh, um, you know, he's got a, he's got one, uh, he's got a course on programming that I'm probably going to take, you know, I took, um, uh, what is it? The, uh, the, the certified conditioning coach, uh, program. Um, so, which again is just how to write conditioning programs. So I've taken a lot of courses on how to write programs and I, and I, it, it's, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's, it, as somebody who, writes programs for a living of a different sort. It, it's funny like how similar, and I think I've talked about this a little bit, but it's funny how similar writing software is to writing training programs, um, you know, from on, on all kinds of levels. And so again, that's another thing that I'm, I'm not, that's another rabbit hole I'm not going to go down unless somebody really wants to hear me talk about that. Cause I mean, I'm happy to go deep and nerdy on it, but um but yeah, so I think that, so let's, so we'll go ahead and just wrap that, 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 that topic up too. But yeah, so point, point being, um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to, to jump into something like that because of, like I said, the program hopping boogeyman. And Hey, if you have questions about that, if there's a challenge you want to do, if there's a thing you want to do, and you're kind of curious about how it might fit into your current cycle or your goals or your schema or whatever, hit me up. I'm happy to like, I'm happy to go over it. I'm happy to walk you through it. I'm happy to do some consulting on it. Or, you know, if you're in a challenge or if you're going into one and, and you have questions about how you might be able to fit it to certain goals, same thing, hit me up. I'm happy to, to kind of give you some suggestions about how you can tweak the workouts, tweak, um, tweak the pattern, the programming, whatever, to kind of fit whatever it is you're trying to do, but still keep to the spirit of that. So... Yeah, uh, I'm happy with that. Let's so like I said, let's leave that there. Uh, what's next? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So this is a question from last week that I, I said I kind of wanted to leave because it's a bit of a of, of a long discussion. And the question was, um, I didn't capture it, or I did, but I didn't write it down somewhere. But the question was, the the essence of the question was, what is the best way to warm up? And um, 
I don't know if this is the best way, but this is my favorite way to warm up. And I'll actually, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the, uh, to the article um, in here, and then it, it'll actually be in the description as well. And uh, I'll, I'll toss it up in my, if you're watching this uh, on IGTV, it'll, I'll, it's, it's in my bio. I'll, I'll leave it there for a bit too. But um, my favorite warm up, and I think I've mentioned this, uh, is, is the six phase dynamic warm up from Dr. John Russin. And what I love about this is, it really addresses the system, and by the system I mean you, the person who's about to train, from a very holistic perspective. Like, there, you know, there's a lot of warmups that, that only focus on just say getting the heart rate up, or there's a lot of warmups I see that just kind of focus on mobility, you know, just kind of getting the, the joints and tissues primed. But if you think about it, you know, there's there's all, I mean, we wanna do both of those things, but we also wanna, we also wanna get the nervous system ready to go, right? In fact, I would say, now that I've been doing this warm up for goodness five years, I think yeah, that's, I think I yeah the first first time I kind of heard about it was uh, yeah I started doing John's programs in 2016, and I've been pretty consistent uh, with them since then, and so I've been doing the six phase for a while, but um, I've really noticed a big difference. I mean, it's one of those like like night and day. Like there's literally days where I've gone into the gym and just you know, been kind of dragging, been tired, just feeling like I'm just not gonna be able to do anything. And then by the time I go through the warm up, I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm ready to go, cool. And the best part is it, it takes maybe, you could you could do this warm up in, in six to eight minutes if, if you really just wanna jump in and go. And let's be honest, I know I know a lot of you guys don't like warming up. I mean, you know, what the, you know, the, the, the purple belt joke, right? Like you know, arrive after arriving late for, uh, for warm ups, or arriving after the warm ups are done. Sorry, uh, yeah, jujitsu joke. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't know because I'm not a purple belt and I'm not going to be for a while. But, um, but you know, if, if you're one of those people who you know you look at warming up as a necessary evil, I think, I think doing this warm up will actually, you know, try it out. And and please, please, please go check out the article um, because it, it really walks you through it like really well. And and it, you know, if you go through the article. And you have some questions about how to program the warm up for a specific training day? Hit me up. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm 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 very good at uh, at, at PPSC programming. So um, and that's the system that's come from the, the pain free performance uh, specialist certification. So anyway, all right. So I've hyped this up enough. So let's uh, let, let, let's dive into to the six phases. So so the first phase is is uh, is local SMR, so local self myofascial release, and that just means getting a foam roller and hitting the spots that that you're going to be working. So if you're doing a squat, if it's a squat day, for example, you know you're going to want to do you want to do glutes, you're going to want to do you know you want to do like the the quads, you're going to want to do the hamstrings, you're going to do um, I don't like to say the IT band, but that area. But the way you're going to do this is so rather than kind of doing the the, the, the pizza roll method that we like to say where you just kind of you just kind of lay on it and you sort of go back and forth what you know on and you know you're, you're taking broad strokes uh, you actually you actually want to do the opposite uh, I think the term we like to use is you actually want to go hunting for hot spots so the way I like to do it is say if I'm doing um, and there's there's actually a specific way you set up for this and um, which is which is another reason I would say go look at uh, go look up some uh, of John's stuff. And if you have questions about like that, you know, like what the actual positions you want to take to hit certain spots, again, hit me up. I'm, I'll make you a video. I'm happy to do that. But um, so where are we? Quads. So say you're going to hit your quads, right? What 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 you what you want to do is you want to set up on your quad. You want you actually do want to start doing kind of that sort of long slow strokes. But you want to like find you want to find some areas of, uh, that that kind of like jump out. So when you roll over it, maybe it's a little you know, it kind of zings you a little bit. It's like, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, like I said, it's a, it's a hot spot. You know, it's a, that's, you know, an area of some, some neurological tension, right? It's, you know, and what you want to do is when you find that is you actually want to just focus on that spot and just roll back and forth. Like, you know, like we're talking like two to three inches, you know, so, and, and, just, and, and, and the goal is just to kind of try and try and just kind of tamp that hot, hot spot down. You know, you, you're not trying to break up scar tissue or release anything. You're just, you're just trying to turn down the neurological tone. You know, basically what's going on is your nervous system is, 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 is feeding impulses to, to, to that area. And you just kind of want to say, Hey, calm down. You know, we're, we, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, yeah, we're going to do some work, but it's cool. Just, just, just chill for a bit. And that's it. And, you know, and, and like I said, you're not doing your whole body. You're just doing you're just doing the areas that you're going to work. And 
you might, you know, you might go over a, a part of your body and you might not find anything. That's, that's totally fine. You know, it, it, there's nothing wrong if that doesn't happen. You know, there's nothing wrong to say you go over your calf or you go over, you know, or, or if you hit your glute meat or something and you're like, oh, I, I don't really feel anything. Um, that's okay. And it, it takes a little bit of practice too. I mean, it, it's so, you know, while you're doing it, it's a bit of a body mapping exercise. So, <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, it's, it, you know, great use for a foam roller, great use to kind of, and, and, and like I said, it's, it's kind of a, it, and personally I like, it, it's a great low barrier to entry way to start warming up. You know, you, you don't, you're not jumping on a treadmill right away. You know, you know, say if you, uh, you just came from work and you know, you're, 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 you're a little beat, you're a little tired and you know, you don't really want to, like I said, like I said, I mean, your, your, your nervous system is probably a little fried. So you don't want to, you don't want to jump right to doing jumping jacks or, or running around a track or running on a treadmill or jumping on the bike or whatever. So so um, then that kind of keeps with that idea of we're trying to, <clears throat> you know, we're trying to address the nervous system in this warm up. And if you're a coach, it's really interesting because if you're using this with a client, you know, you could actually use it as a way to kind of ramp things down a little bit. You know, say somebody just, uh, <laughs> you know, they, they just had a, a meeting with their boss that didn't go too well, for example, and they're, and, you know, they, they're like, oh my God, I need to, I need to work out. It's like, well, okay, you do, but we need to, we need, we need to calm you down a little bit so you don't, you know, so you don't pass out. So you're not, you know, so you're not super sympathetic and, and, you know, and, and you can't recover and, and then, you know, you go home and, and, and stay up all night. So, so that's the first phase, local SMR. Uh, the second phase, uh, you might have heard this term. It's called biphasic stretching. Uh, it, it's something a lot of folks are doing now, but it's this idea of, um, you know, it, you, you don't do just, you don't do a static stretch and you don't do a purely dynamic stretch, you do a little bit of both, right? So for example, um, you know, say, uh, we'll go back to the, the lower body day. So um, I think we're all familiar with the, with the half kneeling hip flexor stretch. You know, it's the thing where you, where, you, know, you go one knee down and then you, you kind of stretch, you know, the knee that's down, you're kind of stretching the, that hip flexor and that quad. Uh, and so, so rather than just holding that position where you would hear the stretch, uh, where you'd feel the stretch, you're, gonna, you're actually gonna like, oscillate back and forth just a little bit and it's not violent you know i know some of you guys are thinking oh my god like you're gonna tear your muscle that way it's like you're not okay this is you know you're not you're not it's not a lot of movement same it's, it's the same with like the the local smr it's it's just a little bit of movement just to get a little bit of movement into the system into the nervous system you know tell your body hey we're gonna be moving a little bit so let's 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 bring it up slow so you do that for a little bit and then you actually hold the stretch so that's those are the biphasic those are the two phases the dynamic the dynamic oscillation and then the, um, the, the static hold. And you want to, you want to increase the range just a little bit each time. You, and you can go through this cycle as many times as you feel like you need to, but I mean, don't spend a ton of time on it. Cause again, we want to, we want to get through the workout and get, get right to, or sorry, get through the warm, get right to working out. So, um, yeah, so don't do it, too, you know, don't, don't spend 30 minutes on, on, on your by phase or on any of these phases or on the whole warm up. But, um, you know, Every time you go through a cycle, try to increase your range of motion just a little more. So, so that's phase two. So SM, local SMR, biphasics. Uh, let's see the the third, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use the C word now, but uh, corrective exercises. And this is just again, it, it's it's specific to to the day you're doing, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. And you know you can find you know go to go to YouTube. You can you know search. You can find correctives for whatever it is you're trying to do. Very simple. So for example, if you're doing like a like an upper body day, um, the uh, what is it the uh, what's what what people call this the quadruped T-spine rotation. You've probably seen it. You're down on all fours. You have one hand behind your head and you're just kind of rotating your T-spine like that. I and mean, that, that's a corrective exercise. And it's, it's simple. It's something everybody needs to do. It's a great way to set up for an upper body day. But again, you know, you, or you can go to the FMS website for, for example, and find tons of great corrective exercises for any day you're trying to do. And again, if you have a question about that, hit me up. I, I will send you corrective exercises. I have tons of them. So, um, and, and again, you know, the, the way we like to, to say you want to apply this stage in PPSC is not necessarily for sets and reps, but you want to do it until, I guess, almost until it feels comfortable. So, you know, so for example, if you've been sitting all day like me and, you know, you go in to do your, your, your T-spine rotation, I mean, at first it's going to feel a little, you know, you're going to feel a little rusty, right? But usually after a couple reps, it starts to kind of smooth out. And then maybe, like for me, usually it takes about, 12 reps on, on a side to where I feel like, okay, I'm moving good. 
And and that's kind of like the metric you want to use. You know, you want to, um, I mean, by this point in the warm up, hopefully you've, you've kind of started to really address some of those linchpins. So it shouldn't, you know, you know, we, we shouldn't be, it, it should, I guess what I'm saying is it shouldn't take that long to get to a point where, you know, it, where they, where, you know, you're feeling like, okay, I feel like I'm moving good. Or, you know, if you're with a client where they're feeling like, okay, this, you know, this feels, I, I feel competent at this. I feel like I can do, you know, I feel like the movement's, the movement's kind of smoothed out. You know, I've got good sequencing on it. You know, I, I, I feel good doing it. So <clears throat> that's phase three. Um, and well, okay, I'll, I'll say what I was going to say later. But um, so phase four, uh, let's see, we want to, the activation phase. So now we want to do some drills where uh, we're actually trying to, we're, we're actually focusing on on activating the, I guess the, you know, the, the change, the tissues, you know, the muscles that we're actually, that we're going to be using primarily. So for example, one of my favorite activations is um, uh, for a push day, I like to just, I like to just go down to the bottom of a push up and then just squeeze, you know, so go down, hold, you know, squeeze my lats, squeeze my, you know, squeeze my, squeeze my arms, squeeze, just kind of tighten everything up and then just come out of that. And, um, you know, you can do that. Uh, and again, I, I like to do it kind of in an oscillatory fashion. So it's like, I'll squeeze, hold, you know, hold for like a second, relax, hold for like another second, relax and do that, you know, 10 times, 15 times. Um, not too long. Again, you don't, you don't want to like tire yourself out. I mean, this is not an exercise. Okay. So, you know, you know, you know fight, fight the urge to turn the warm up into the workout before the workout, which I know some people love doing, but that, that's not the point. Um, so yeah, sorry. Um, activation. Yeah. So I, and that, that's really all there is to that. I mean, and, and again, this is one of those, just, just find something that, that is, that is, that is relevant to what you're doing and, and get into a position and just, just activate the muscles, just tighten the muscles, just wake the muscles up. Uh, let's see. Activation pattern practice. Okay. So now, so once everything's woken up, we want to, we, you actually want to practice the pattern. Um, so if you're doing a squat day, it means squat. Um, so get a light kettlebell and just do a goblet squat. And again, this is not a workout. So you're not doing, you're doing three to five reps. And the goal is, the goal is, is, uh, is rep quality. So slow it down, you know, go, you know, work in, work in, in the range that you, that you know, you own, um, good activation. So, you know, so if I guess so I'm doing a kettlebell goblet squat, I'm making sure that, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm pulling apart. I've got my lats set. Uh, I'm sitting back, uh, I'm going, you know, I'm controlling my descent. I'm controlling my ascent and like I said, three to five reps. And you can do that for, I usually do two sets, but again, it's, it's kind of on you. Um, again, don't, don't turn into a workout. Just do enough to where you feel like, okay, that feels good. I feel like I'm ready to go. And then the last, uh, the last part is priming. So now we're going to do something that, that really just kind of ramps up the nervous system kind of the rest of the way. And this is where, you know, you're going to do, um, I think the term we like to use is, 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 uh, is dynamic twitchy movements. So, um, for example, for upper body day, one of the things we like to do is, uh, is jumping jacks or seal jacks. Um, and again, you're not doing a lot. You're doing three to five reps really fast, but you're trying to, I mean, basically as fast as you can do them, uh, for lower body days, for example, you could do, um, you could do broad jumps. Uh, you could do depth, dro- you do depth drops. You could do, um, you could do squat jumps. And again, uh, it's not, um, it, it's, it's not for, it's not for a ton of reps. It's, it's more just about, it's just trying to get through it as fast as you can. It's trying, trying to get speed, trying to like say, Hey, nervous system, like we're going to move now. And that's really it. You know, so once you get through that, hopefully you're feeling, you know, by, you know, you should be feeling ramped up. You should be feeling ready to go. Um, and there's, there's definitely ways you can sort of branch off you know, different things you can, you know, you do extended phases. Uh, that's a whole other conversation. Uh, and again, if somebody wants to hear me talk about that, I'm happy to, like I said, hit me with a DM and I'm happy to go deeper into the whole, the whole six phase thing, but that's, that's really kind of the crux of it. So that's, that's my, I don't know if that's the best way to warm, but that's my favorite warm up. So just to recap, the six phases are, um, uh, local SMR, biphasic stretching, corrective exercises, um, activation, uh, pattern practice and neural priming. So, uh, like I said, check out the article. It's linked below. Um, it's also in my bio if you're watching this on IGTV and, um, yeah, let's see. I think that's the last thing we have to talk about today. Yeah. Um, I have some tech talk questions, but I think I'm going to save those two mainly because I don't have footage for them. And, uh, if I'm going to be talking about like games and, tech things. I actually want to have things to show you guys. So 
So if I can cap footage, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more next time. But um, that's what I've got for episode three. If you have questions, uh, anything you'd like me to dive into, you know the drill. Hit me up, send me an email, send me a DM. All the contact information is in my bio. It's in the description. It's on, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's on my about page. So you, you, should, you have no excuse for not getting in touch with me if you want to. So uh, that's what I got. Um, yeah. As usual, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Cheers.